Hi, my name is Felix Knight. This is the third devlog for my climate change game, uh, which right now is called Climate Conversations, <laughs> but I don't really like that, so I'm going to be trying to workshop a better name for that uh, as the semester goes on. Um, over the past two weeks, I've mostly been doing research, and then last week uh, I made this game pitch that I showed to my instructor, and he had really good feedback for it. Um, he really liked it and yet had some interesting ideas for things like kind of add to it uh, or w different ways I can take it not like a you need to do this but just like that sounds really great you can use it in this way your ideas in this way um, so the main thing here uh, is that I want okay so this game is going to be a, a third person platformer the character is going to be able to talk uh, to different characters in the game it's, it's mostly just going to be exploring platforming uh, and a dialogue system for the, for the player to be able to talk and make different choices within dialogue and stuff like that. Um, the point of the game is to uh, educate people about climate change and specifically give them strategies for things that they can go do out in the real world um, to help uh, reduce, climate, reduce their sort of impact on climate change. Um, and one of those things is being able to talk with other people uh, is really huge. It's so being able to have conversations with friends and family that trust them and will listen to them. Um, and I want this game to essentially kind of simulate that. So the characters, the, or the player is gonna be able to talk to some people that are gonna kind of inform them um, of different aspects of climate change. Um, we're gonna get into what I have here is causes, effects, and solutions, all things that I've already researched. Now I'm just trying to come up with a way to uh, implement them in the game. Um, and so the player will learn those things, literally, uh, they will now know that information, right? There might be a statistic on, on something, right? I'm imagining, uh, as an example, one of the locations you might visit is a wind farm. You go talk to one of the uh, wind uh, turbine technicians, and you're like, well, this is great. We have, you know, we're improving our renewable energy uh, power uh, supply. And he goes, yeah, it is really good, but we need to increase that uh, supply by like 10 times as much for the next, you know, few decades, which, which is an accurate statistic. Like that's, that's a real thing. Um, not exactly that amount, but roughly like we, we really need to increase the amount of uh, uh, renewable energy that we're creating very quickly. So the player can take that, and I can I might even have something where they can see that real world statistic. Uh, maybe it opens a web page either in the game or in the background and minimizes the game or something like that. Um, so the player can go, oh, now I know that that you know educational resource exists, and I can go do more reading on it later if I want. Or I can go uh, revisit it and kind of get a refresher or review on it. Um, so. Yeah, these are the different kind of actions that I'm hoping uh, players might take. Not necessarily all of them, but hopefully at least one of them, right? Learn new things, um, know what sources of information are valuable. Like Project Drawdown has been immense for starting on this project, and I think it's a great thing for just anybody to look at. Um, this book, The Future We Choose, I really, really want to read this. Um, accurate, you know, climate modeling. Uh, Get, trying to encourage people to transition to a plant-rich diet, which is uh, a hard kind of conversation to have, but I think it's something wor worth exploring in the game. And then, like I said, initiating conversations with people, using your knowledge um, and the, that connection that they have with you to get them interested. Uh, and especially in the United States where our governing uh, system controls so much of how, or, or could control, has the potential to control our uh, push towards uh, clean energy and things like that, making sure that you know who you're voting for, what their stance is on different things, what their climate policy is, whether it's complete or missing things and, and you need to vote for somebody else, something like that. So I'm gonna break that down into causes, effects, solutions, all things that I've already researched and written about, which is great. Um, but now I need to try to find, the, find a way to work these things into the game. So. For this week, I'm making a paper prototype, and next week is when I'll start on the actual uh, video game. 
uh, in Unreal Engine 4. But a paper prototype is great because you can test something. In this case, I really want to test my dialogue to begin with. And I think you know the third-person platforming stuff is things I've done before. Um, and you know, kind of formulaic. It's 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 pretty easy to get something that feels good. Um, you know, getting something that feels really amazing is another story. But I know that I uh, that the the sort of conversations that people are going to have in the game that's going to be the thing that is kind of new and innovative and probably trickiest for me to figure out. So I want to test that early on, and I can do that really easy on paper. Just show people a map and go, where do you want to go? And they, you know, say, I want to move to this space or whatever. Talk to this character. I have just the dialogue on note cards or something like that printed out. And we can play that way, and we can see if people, you know, react positively to that, and if they're they're engaged by it and learn something. So yeah, I want to come up with um, different locations and characters that incorporate uh, the different causes, effects, and solutions. I'm pretty much just going to brainstorm, list out a bunch of stuff, and then once I have a pretty complete list, I'll start um, actually planning out like a map for the world and uh, the different. Um, if I need to do more planning for the characters, then I'll do that, but start writing the uh, actual dialogue trees that you can have with them and the different rules for, like, if you learn this thing, now you can use it in a different conversation, stuff like that. So, see you then. Yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, I completed basically a list of the different ideas that I have um, for people that you can talk to and kind of, like, some ideas about the locations where I'll be located. Um, my next sort of task is gonna be grouping um, these ideas. I'm gonna run through it real quick one more time and make sure that I actually have uh, all of the topics covered in a way that I want. Um, but you can see, hopefully, <laughs> um, that a handful of these I have like uh, people that explain um, different information. And then a few of these say persuade, so they're going to be um, somebody that you're going to try to encourage to do something. Those are, the, I think I have six ideas for people that you can persuade and get points there. So I might try to come up with some more, um, but that also might be good. Um, I don't expect to necessarily be able to use every single one of these. Um, if I could just use the ones that like are especially important. Uh, then I will, and if I tr if I include any more persuades or like try to look for any, I'll look for more specifically that are like parts of the. Um, that looks like most of the main. Uh, what's the word? Most of the top uh, solutions here actually have some sort of persuasion, so that's great. Um, I thought it would be worth mentioning, in terms of trying to plan out my content in a way that, um, right, if it relies, if like uh, one person's conversation relies on another person's conversation, I wanna be sure that I don't spread myself too thin and you wanna be really careful with uh, project design that you don't, um, like having things inter interwoven uh, and having one thing in the world affect something else feels really good to the player. Um, but if you do that too much, then what ends up happening is, you, or if you do it uh, for things that could be a really high cost, like creating dialogue and unique uh, environments for all these characters or whatever, um, what happens is you have a bunch of really high cost items that all rely on each other. And if you can't get one into the game, they all end up falling through. Um, or you have to do some big shift to try to fix them all later. So I felt like it was worth mentioning my, as I plan these out, what I'm probably going to do, rather than have the people that you persuade as uh, unique characters with their own environments or whatever, or their own things, I'll probably actually work those into the same people that are get, excuse me, that are giving you information. So you go up, you'll be able to get some information from them, but they'll also, you know, have something else. And I think that would also be good to demonstrate, like, even if somebody is doing the right thing on one front, um, so sometimes they may not be aware of other problems uh, that exist with climate change or other things in the world. Um, and that's like still a valuable conversation to have with them. Um, so you might have you know, the wind turbine technician that I had mentioned earlier, right? Um, you know, he tells you all this really important, uh, useful information about uh, wind energy, 
Um, but then you see that his lunch is like just this huge thing that like has a lunchbox packed full of just like meat or whatever. <laughs> and that might be a good place to have a conversation of like, hey, did you know also, you know, switching over to a more plant based diet would be good. So that way I don't have to make tons and tons of different characters. It's probably better for the player as well. Um, and then I think if I arrange them in sort of a triangle, right? Uh, person A has information that helps you talk to person B. Person B has information that talks to you, helps you with person C. Person C helps you talk to person A. So it kind of goes in that thing where by, in or, by talking to all three of them, then you uh, kind of get the information that you need for the other ones or whatever. Um, and that way I might be able to block out, like have this group of important people that I uh, points and uh, that I want the player to learn, especially important uh, concepts and uh, the sort of aspects of the people that I want them to be able to use their knowledge and persuade them to do something else. Um, I can organize those into kind of chunks, right? So I can make sure that I knock out that entire chunk in one or two weeks or whatever. And then any extra time that I have, I can use that to... Um, fill the world with other characters that'll give them more good, valuable information, but maybe not stuff that's quite as critical as uh, the different solutions, especially. It's like one of the things that I really, really want to focus on. And they're integral for um, being able to talk to people about like, hey, this is what you can do uh, as an individual to contribute to stopping climate change. So I'm going to go through this list one more time try to maybe think about um, some characters that the player might want to persuade, although I think six already is probably a lot. And then I'll start or organizing these concepts into groups of people that I can kind of tackle in that way uh, to reduce risk. So we'll come back uh, once I've done that. So I had miscalculated and I actually, or like misremembered my count, and I had nine uh, different people that I wanted the player to uh, interact with it in a persuasive way. Um, but I figured that out. I narrowed it down into these three groups. I think it's important that the player feels like the characters that they're having a conversation with are intelligent, not just because it's a more realistic and entertaining game in that way, but also because I think it's easy for us to kind of like learn a whole bunch of things and then feel really empowered and smart about that and then just assume that everybody else is a complete idiot <laughs> and doesn't know anything about anything and we have to like spoon feed them all this information but that's not the case usually people have some understanding of some aspect of like climate change or whatever right or they you know read an article about something somewhere along the line and um, picked up some inf neat information like i'm, I'm sure uh you know, probably in my household, like my parents know things about climate change that I don't, despite doing all this research and reading. Um, they probably know some, some fact or some interesting thing. Um, so I think just reminding the player that like, hey, even though you might have valuable information and contribute to somebody else's knowledge, chances are they actually have something that they could teach you too. Um, and to not like come into conversations in a way where you just expect to be teaching everyone all the time. But yeah, that was the main kind of thing that I was actually worried about, and it actually ended up being easier than I expected. And I'm sure that there are a bunch of these uh, kind of pieces of information that I want uh, to be conveyed that I can combine into multiple characters. Like I want the player to be able to pick up some information about uh, the politics at hand in uh, the United States and so that same character that gives you information about replanting um, and that you also have to uh, try to convince like, hey, food waste is a huge issue, so you should listen to this petition that says we should cap food waste. Um, they might, uh, the same representative might also have that legal experience and be able to tell you like, hey, here's actually a little bit of the history of how this uh, legislation has gone in uh, US Congress. Um, so I can, I can, I don't need a separate character for every single one of these concepts. I can have the same character, have a few different co points of conversation um, so you can learn some different things from them. I might kind of come up with like characters and delegate the remaining 
uh, conversation points to them, actually, that might be a valuable thing to do. And then I'll go through and uh, come up with all of the different locations that that would then require, because I also want to be wary of like how many set pieces and stuff like that um, this will need. So, okay, I now have the list of all, I broke down all of the different conversation topics um, into different characters. And that comes out to 20 unique characters with different conversations and stuff. I don't know if I'm going to have to make my own dialogue system or if I'm going to be able to use the uh, blueprint dialogues that I used in the Winter Asset Jam. Um, if you haven't checked that, plugging it. Uh, but I might, I might be able to use that. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I think the... Um, the volume of sort of writing for all of these different characters um, 20, 20 people is like pretty doable and only really at the end of the day uh, these kind of nine people are the ones that I really want to have so that I can hammer in uh, the different persuasive parts because I feel like that's kind of the, uh, a meatier part of the game. The other ones are obviously uh, have important useful information that I picked out of my sources and stuff. Oh yeah I said I was going to sort of come up with the different locales that I'm thinking I'm going to need for the game then, uh, based on like where all these people would actually make sense contextually. Did this uh, location to landmarks, and I got them sorted into, into sort of ABC. These locations and landmarks are going to be necessary for the people that you're going to be persuading. Uh, these ones pertain to a lot of the other people. Um, and specifically the ones where it's going to be like kind of a more integral part of talking to them. Um, the other ones uh, are places where embassy, university, high school, like they're all kind of less recognizable buildings, I think. They're less recognizable landmarks. Uh, they're more just like regular old buildings. Um, and the, the HVAC guy could be kind of wherever, I think. So these are C bucket. Like if I had them, that's great. But if I don't, it probably wouldn't be the end of the world to just like put those people out on the street, <laughs> where like hanging out wherever. Um, they don't necessarily need landmarks. So that's good. I'm gonna start writing dialogue now. But here is the beginnings of that. Um, you can kind of see in here there are places where if you have some information that you've learned. Um, which is tracked, I would just have like a checklist of the info that you've learned and then the people that you've been able to convince. Um, then knowing more things allows you to uh, engage in different conversations that allow you to either learn more stuff or um, uh, convince them of different things. <clears throat> oh, I just realized that my thing is really small, uh, the text size. so. Yeah, there's yeah places where you can make those kinds of choices, stuff like that. Um, that three hours allowed me to get through three people's worth of dialogue, and it's like a lot. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on like how much words this might end up being, how much di how much dialogue the player might end up reading, um, and I certainly can't. I have like twenty characters planned out. Um, but only dialogue written for three at this point. So I can't um, afford to get like voice acting for every single one of those or anything like that. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through and get this into something that's actually printable um, and then cut these all into cards so that I can easily kind of like flip through them uh, while I'm play testing with people. And then I'll probably uh, wanna make a map, right? That uh, the player can see where stuff is at and it'll probably just be a printed sheet of paper with some different like little locations and also make some sort of like tokens that show like oh this person has information for you um where they have something where you could persuade them or whatever um and maybe also some indicator that like hey, you're not ready, you don't have the information to be able to persuade them of something yet. Um, but then obviously once you unlock that info, it would be like, now you can go back and talk to Maria or Miller or whoever. 
Did I name all of these people with M first names? No, we got Maria, Miller, and Jake. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Did not get through nearly as many characters as I had like kind of expected or hoped for. I really, really wanted to get six so that I could... Oh shoot, I forgot that I had nine of these groups. Okay. But honestly, if I can just test one group next week. <laughs> If this stuff works, um, or even if it doesn't work, I can pretty much just copy paste the dialogue that I've written so far into the engine for the game and run it uh, once I you know get a working dialogue system and then edit it from there. So thankfully, protest uh, play cop <laughs> protesting uh, prototyping stuff like dialogue is great because then you can just copy paste your dialogue into your game later. <laughs> um, it's something that's really easily transferable. So here are my cards all cut up. It's a nice thick stack. <laughs> so map next. Map next. Yeah. Okay, this is like probably hilariously bad. <laughs> but hey, I can just sketch out a map real quick. I dug some old board game components out of my box of a gajillion different components. So that was pretty much it. I mean, what I have to show totally for the um, for what I actually ended up making um, doesn't feel like a whole lot, but I mean, there's a lot of written dialogue there. And I think it was a better thing for me overall to like do a lot of planning now, especially about how I was going to um, interweave the different characters' stories in a way that uh, reduces risk, right, like I mentioned. Because um, I think if I had left that stuff, I could have ended up getting myself into a lot of trouble with this just, like, massive web of characters that all reference each other and things like that, that if I can't make all of them, you know. And like today, for instance, right, I got through three out of, I was hoping to do at least nine, but ideally 20, I finished three uh, people's worth of dialogue, so if that happens on the scale of the entire game and I don't plan out smaller, completable chunks, then I would be not in good shape. Next week, it will be playtesting this thing with my folks, my, my family. Um, so I won't record that, but I will you know, be able to talk about kind of the results of that. Um, and it'll also revol uh, involve making a product roadmap, which would be a great thing to show. Essentially, it lays out here are the big steps that I need to complete uh, from start to finish for the entire game. So yeah, that's, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to have some cool content for you next week whenever I actually see how this stuff starts to play.